Google Drive is the storage service. As such, it's really great for finding and organizing files, although you can also use Drive to create new files in Google Docs and Google's other programs. Here's the view on a web browser. I recommend using Google Chrome because it supports all the features of Google Drive and Google Docs. Now, if you're looking at the screen here, there's, you'll see lots of different icons. Uh, it may appear a little bit confusing at first, but actually, once you learn the features, it's, it's pretty intuitive how to use it. A lot of the action takes place over here where the New button is. And if you click that, you'll see a whole bunch of different options. Uh, one of them is to upload files or upload folders, but you can also create a new Google Docs file from here, as well as other types of Google formats. My Drive is the folder hierarchy that users can use to organize the files on their uh, Google Drive account. And the advantage of doing this is, if you have lots of files, it makes it much easier if they're organized into different folders for different types of things, such as book manuscripts, business and legal, etc. cetera. Uh, shared with me are files and folders that either you have shared with other people or other people have shared with you. And this is very important to collaboration. So for instance, if I'm working with Andrew on my LinkedIn book, uh, we have this folder that we both use and we can both take a look at resources there. Google Photos, it's outside of the scope of this tutorial, but as you can imagine, it consists of photos that you've uploaded to Google servers. Recent is very useful because it will basically show the uh, files and folders that you've worked on recently. So if you've been working on something yesterday or over the weekend, it will show up here in this, in this uh, list in reverse chronological order. Starred are files or folders that you've marked for special use later on. Trash is a little misleading because you may think it consists of deleted files and folders, but actually they're not deleted yet. They're kind of in a holding pattern and then you can opt to uh, delete them forever just by selecting one of them and then just hit, hit the delete forever button up here. Also, if you put something in the trash folder, you can also restore it too. So if I wanted to restore this particular uh, spreadsheet, I just select it and then click the restore button. Now, uh, on the top of the screen, there are some other icons, and interestingly, many of them are contextual, which means that if you have a, let's say that you have a, a folder here, once you select the folder, new icons will pop up. This one, for instance, will put it into the trash folder. This one will share that particular folder, it's called i30 Media, with other people, and I'd enter their names or email addresses. This will create a link, which I can then send to other people or even post it publicly, although, of course, for sensitive data, you don't want to do that. Now, this, uh, this icon here, it's confusing to a lot of people, but basically it, it gives you more actions. Uh, it's three vertical dots. Click on it, and then you can see all kinds of new stuff. Um, you can create a new folder in there. You can move it, add a star, um, rename it. You can change the color. And you can also download it to your, to your hard drive. So this is actually a pretty important icon to know about. Now, over here, there's some more icons. Uh, the settings is very important, not only if you want to adjust the settings of your Google Drive account, but also if you want to download the application, the Google Drive application, which you can use on a PC or Mac. And basically what this does, as we'll discuss later in the tutorial, is it makes it possible to sync large numbers of files and folders to your Google Drive account. Keyboard shortcuts, that's also useful if you don't like using a mouse, you just want to use a, a keyboard shortcut to get around and help. Uh, information will show details about whatever's highlighted over here. So you can see that uh, there's, this shows my activity in the past uh, few months or however long it's been that I've been working on this particular one. AZ, this basically sorts it uh, alphabetically or gives you another option. So right now it's sorted alphabetically, A at the top going, going down. But if I wanted to, I could shift it to last modified, last modified by me, et cetera. This icon here switches between list view and grid view. Right now it's list view, just listing the names, but if I switch to grid view, everything will look like a, an icon or even a kind of a, screen, a mini screenshot or thumbnail of the files inside. So that can be pretty useful to browse as well. Uh, finally, on the top row here, this shows which account, which Google account is being, is being used with Drive notifications, which I often don't pay attention to because they're not really that useful to me. This icon, uh, this, these nine little squares, this shows other Google apps, which is actually pretty important. So if I want to switch between Google Drive 
in Google Docs, I'd click that and then I'd select Google Docs and it would open up Google Docs in a new tab. Finally, search. This is super important, especially if you have lots of files and folders in your Google Drive account. It lets you quickly search by type. Um, so I could search photos or PDFs or presentations, or it lets you search by name. So if I wanted to take a look at, let's say, uh, 2016, uh, any, any file with the, name, with the number 2016 in it or the date, it would show up here. If you change the, um, the name, it'll show you quickly what sorts of files and folders are available with that in the account. So as you can see, uh, there's lots of icons and different things, but once you use it for a while, you'll, you'll really get the hang of it. As I said before, new is where a lot of the action takes place to upload or create a new file. Search is very important for finding things. And then, of course, if you want to see what you've been working on recently, just click that particular icon.